so natokinase is a uh, kind of a, uh, a natural enzyme that comes from the food natto, which is Japanese food that people often eat um, for breakfast that supposedly tastes terrible. Um, but there is some good data in vitro um, that natokinase um, helps to break spike protein. Dosing, um, these uh, typically it comes in 100 milligrams or 2,000 functional units or FUs. Um, and this is for natokinase. There's differences for lumbrokinase and serapeptidase. Um, but typically I do 100 to 200 twice a day. Um, sometimes we go up to 300, which is 6,000 functional units twice a day. The, the one that was tested to see if it breaks down spike protein was natokinase. And it was done in a yes. petri dish yeah. in vitro. So, you know, we don't know how well it does this in vivo, meaning in you, in a person. But um, at least that's pretty interesting. And the other benefit of it is that it does also break down fibrin. That was kind of the original use for a lot of these enzymes was like breaking down fibrin or breaking down different kinds of biofilms. So it was just kind of like an extra bonus that like, oh, natokinase also might dissolve spike protein. That's pretty cool. Um, since spike protein, um, you know, binds to ACE2 receptors, it can cause them to downregulate, damage them. Uh, it also seems to possibly be uh, thrombogenic, meaning uh, it actually can bind to fibrin in an area where, so fibrin is kind of like, it, it's one of the most like, uh, fibrinogen is the precursor to fibrin. It's one of the most abundant proteins in your blood. And what happens is, is when thrombin comes by, it like activates it. And so then it forms this insoluble like fiber. So imagine it's kind of like a little spaghetti noodle. Um, and what that does is the spaghetti noodles, they kind of cross link and they form like a mesh and that's what stops you from bleeding. So like it forms this, this sort of sticky mesh that then platelets and red blood cells can get stuck in and you form clots so that you don't bleed. Um, but there's another enzyme that comes by your body's coagulation is always in an active equilibrium. So you can make clots and then your body also breaks them down. So you don't just pile up a bunch of clots and then all your blood vessels clog up. Your body's constantly making and breaking down. There's a balance, the yin and the yang. So mm -hmm. the problem is, is that spike seems to bind right to the section of fibrin, that spaghetti noodle, that the enzyme that's supposed to break it down binds to. So when spike, this was a study out of uh, UCSF, it's, I believe it's still a preprint though. Um, when spike is bound to that fibrin, not only does it form a weird looking crosslink, like it looks different um, under electron microscopy, and they showed really cool pictures of this, but also it takes longer to break that fibrin clump down. And that has been seen by groups like Dr. Risu Pretorius and Doug Kell and Kellen Dalton, Yako Lobster, all these folks who've been looking at microclots um, that's what they've been saying is like, Hey, you know, yeah, other diseases of microclots, people make them when they're acutely sick, but then they are supposed to kind of go away. But in long COVID folks, it seems like they're bigger, there's more of them and they're taking way longer to go away. And it kind mm -hmm. of, you know, just piecing together the science, it looks like it kind of makes sense if spike kind of blocks your own natural enzyme plasmin from being able to break down that fibrin, that natural balance of making clots and breaking them down, suddenly you can't break them down anymore. And so you just keep making them and making them and making them. And that doesn't do great things to your blood vessels and your body. So, yep. you know, yep. so natokinase can help break down fibrin, presumably it, from a different area than the one that the spike is bound to, but I'm not 100% sure. I do know that there's some researchers who are actually testing natokinase extracts on microclots to see if it can break them down. Um, mm -hmm. So they're actually going through the same thing of figuring out which brand should we use, which one's best, how do you yeah. prep it, blah, 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 blah. So uh, to, to really kind of show that in a Petri dish, um, because that's, you know, lumbrokinase is another enzyme that breaks down fibrin, so is serapeptase. So all of those guys are kind of on our list, but natto is the only one that we just happen to know, A, also might break down spike. Might as well use that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Now, some people use a combo of all three and you can totally do that. Um, but if you're kind of, you know, cost limitations and stuff, natto kinase would probably be the one to go for since it's sort of have dual purpose.